Hello, in this video I will be installing Joomla on an AWS EC2 instance and I'd like to point out that I'm using the Ubuntu laptop to do this but you can do it using the Windows or Mac laptop as well. Some of the commands will be a little bit different but for the most part it's the same. Uh, I'll be So in the video I'll be creating an AWS EC2 Ubuntu instance. I'll install the Apache web server, install PHP, install and configure the MySQL database Joomla will use to store the data and download and install Joomla on the EC2 instance and then configure the Joomla installation with the MySQL database. Okay, so here I am in the AWS Management Console at uh, console.aws.amazon.com. If, if you don't have an account, you can go there and you can create one. And <clears throat> for this video, I'd point out that I'm in the North Virginia region. You might want to select a different region if one's closer to you. Uh, when I go under services and under compute, there's this EC2 link. I click on that, it brings me to the EC2 UI. I click on launch instance and launch instance again. It'll take me to where you can choose an Amazon AMI. There's a variety to choose from, but I'm going to choose the Ubuntu server 2004 on the free tier. You can choose an instance type. For this video, I'm going to choose the T2 Micro, which is a small server. You might want to choose a bigger one, but for development or for trying to learn how to use Joomla, this is perfectly fine. On the details page, I'm going to accept all of the defaults, but I would point out that I am on I am deploying this to my default VPC. On the storage, it defaults to 8 gigabytes, uh, general purpose SSD, which is fine for this purpose. Uh, on the tags, I'm going to add a tag, a name. I've already created one with this uh, name, but that's why it popped it up there. But I'm going to go ahead and choose it again, my Joomla web server. For security groups, we create a security group so that uh, access uh, is granted to the instance. Uh, you can It defaults with the SSH one for port 22. If you don't already have a security group that you want to use, you can add new ones here. You can select HTTP and it'll give you the port 80. I already have a, a security group that I'm going to use. I'm going to select it and so it has the HTTP ports for the IPv4 IP addresses and for the IPv6 addresses. SSH and HTTPS won't be using HTTPS in this, but it's a good thing to add it. Uh, so you're, you can review the configuration and it's uh, giving you this warning that you're open to the world, which you may or may not want, but for what we're doing here, we do want that. So I'm going to go ahead and click launch. Before it launch it, it makes me select a key pair so that we can SSH into the instance. Uh, I already have one, this my Joomla EC2 key pair, but if you don't already have one, you can create one, just type in a name and download that key pair. I would point out that this is your one and only chance to download this key pair. You can never generate it again. You can generate a new one, but you can't download this one again. So pull it off and save it. And I'd also point out that if you're using a Windows computer, you download this PEM file and there's a program or a process to go through to generate a PPK file for use on Windows. Go to this Amazon page, it'll tell you all about that. I'm going to go back here, I'm going to select my, my Joomla EC2, acknowledge this, and it, it'll launch. And so now we can view the instances. <clears throat> Uh, I already had a couple of these with this name that I was playing around. So the EC2 instance is running now. If I click on this checkbox, it gives me a bunch of details here. And uh, I'm going to connect to that instance. So if I go into here to connect, there's this SSH command for this instance. I'll copy that. I go to my terminal. I've already I've copied that PEM file that I downloaded the, the key pair into this directory where I'm located. So I can just uh, paste that SSH command in here. It'll ask me if I want to continue. Yes. And we're in. Okay, so now I need to uh, update the software, the instance. Oop. Forgot the get. We'll perform that update. Shouldn't take too long. I'll do an 
upgrade of the, of the instance. This will take a little while, so I'll pause this video. Okay, that's completed now. Now we can install the uh, Apache server. All these commands will be in the show notes. Okay, now I'll install PHP. This is going to take a while, so I'll pause the video again. Okay, that's completed. So now I'm going to create a uh, PHP My Info page. Paste that in there. Go back to the, the instance, get this IP address. Go there, we got the uh, Apache index page. And PHP is working as well. Good. So, so at this point, we're ready to install MySQL. Before I do that, I want to talk about uh, the advantages and disadvantages. There's a couple ways you can install MySQL. You can install it on the same EC2 instance as the web server, or you can have a separate database server. Uh, and so some of the advantages of installing on the in the web server would be uh, you have one instance for the both the, the web server and the database. It's simple. It could be used for development or for training or a so low usage site, and it's low cost. So those are the advantages of the uh, installing it all on the, on the same. The, in, the advantage of uh, installing the database on a separate uh, EC2 or on a separate instance would be that it's more secure, much more secure. It's uh, less maintenance. AWS will handle the uh, upgrades and the patches and uh, to some extent the backups and the uh, those types of activities, and it's much more scalable. Uh, disadvantages would be uh, for having the uh, the web server and the database on the same instance. Uh, the developer is responsible for the upgrades and the backups. It's less secure. You really shouldn't do this, but if it's just for training or for uh, a private site, you could do that. It's uh, and it's harder to scale. And uh, one of the disadvantages of having the database on a separate instance would be that it costs more, but it's worth it. Uh, you really shouldn't do the local database installation, except for those few exceptions. So for this video, I'm going to install the MySQL server on the same instance. So we'll go ahead and, and do that now. I'll paste this command. Okay, that completed. So now I'm going to check the status of the incident instance. And it says it's running. And since we since we have this database installed on the same instance as the web server, we should make it more secure. And so we can go through these steps to do that. I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna require strong passwords. And I'm gonna type in that password now. Do you wish to continue with the password provided? Yes, I do. Remove anonymous users? Yes. Disallow root login remotely? Yes. Remove test database? Yes. Reload privilege tables now? Yes. All done. Okay. Uh, and when I chose the strong password requirements. MySQL has these requirements for strong passwords. The password must be nine characters. You have to have two uppercase letters, two upper, two lowercase letters, two numbers, and two of the following special characters. So now we'll see if I can log in there. Oop, I typed it in wrong. And we're in. Oop. 
There we go. Show the databases. Okay. So now we're going to create our Joomla database. And I'm going to create a Joomla user. And note the password meets the strong password requirement. Going to grant that Joomla user all privileges on this database. And I'm going to exit. So now I'm going to download the Joomla software. I think I'm already on the page, but I'll click on this. It's downloads.joomla.org slash CMS slash Joomla 3. Uh, this is the latest one. That's what I want. So I'll click on View Files. I'm going to scroll down a little bit to this Joomla full package.zip. I'm going to download that. And when that's completed, you need an FTP client to uh, FTP that from the laptop to the Joomla or to the uh, AWS EC2 instance. And I would do that with FileZilla. I already have this installed, so I'm not going to run this, but you can use that command to do that. And note that this is on my local laptop. So I have this Joomla software, or I have this uh, FileZilla. I'm going to get this IPv4. instance. I'm going to go to the site manager. I'm going to put my IP address in there. I've selected SFTP transfer protocol. I have the key file option here. I have the user as Ubuntu. <clears throat> if you used a Linux, uh, an Amazon Linux AMI, you'd want to use the EC2 user as the user. But since this is Ubuntu, that's the user. And then browse for the key pile file, key pair file. Click on connect. Always trust this host. OK. And this is the downloads directory. I'm going to click refresh just to make sure. There we go. I'm going to drag that over there. Almost there. So that's completed. And so now that we've got that on the EC2 instance, before I can install that, I have to uh, install this unzip on the EC2, on the on the EC2 instance. So that's. That's uh, completed. I'm going to just take a look at my document root on my web server. I got two files there. I'm going to move that index file. call it old. Oop, missed the first slash. There we go. So now that I have the I have that zip file in this directory, I'm going to unzip it and put it in the document root. That should go pretty quickly. I want to make a couple of changes so the web server is the owner of all those files and modify the permissions for the web server to access all those files. I want to restart my web server. And now I want to get this IPv4 IP address again. And go here. And there we are. We have the Joomla uh, UI showing up.
Excellent. Okay, I filled in the previous, the configuration page, but it had some personal information on there, so I didn't add it to this video. But on the database configuration page, I'm going to enter the database name I entered earlier. And the password that I created. And the database name. This table prefix, I usually just leave it to whatever it has here. Uh, the local host is the same. And I'm going to pause the video here because I think the overview is going to show some of that personal bit, uh, information again. Okay, I uh, went through that uh, review page. I did select uh, the option to install sample data using the English language on this page. It says, congratulations, Joom is now installed. The one last thing to do here is to remove the installation folder. You should do that. I don't think Joomla will let you prog progress without doing that. It's just a safe thing to do. So I'm going to click on that. It's installed. And I think if I go back and do uh, that the uh, installation folder is no longer there. So that is it. Uh, thank you for watching this video.